How's everybody doing? I asked, how's everybody doing? Woo! Fantastic, that's a little bit better. Everybody, uh, I'd like to thank you all for being here. I know a lot of you traveled far to be here today for this uh, very special occasion. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to start this panel. Um, First, I'd like to thank you all for being here. Uh, I know many of you traveled quite a distance, like I said. 35 years ago, the most influential, iconic, and perhaps the greatest science fiction film ever conceived at cinemas. We're gathered here today in celebration of that achievement, a film that still inspires all, perhaps even more so now than ever. A film that will Sci-fi as we know it simply didn't exist before Blade Runner, folks. There was no science fiction film like, like Blade Runner. There was always a polished future, the pristine, polished future. And we didn't have a lived-in future until Ridley Scott gave us Blade Runner. Now it's often imitated. Um, I don't have much time, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and introduce our fantastic guest here. So I want to present to you this unprecedented cast reunion of the masterpiece that is Blade Runner. Please help us welcome with a round of applause here, Kevin Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. Kevin Thompson. So before Jay Bowman said he didn't like Blade Runner, he didn't like. Deckard, he didn't like his character, he didn't like his art, he didn't like the relationship with Rachel. However, he's very different from 2049 and his character. Also, I don't think Deckard's the main character. It might be bad, it could just be an ensemble film. The film begins with the description of four replicants, so it may not just be Deckard, especially since if you have the interpretation that Deckard isn't a replicant, or with the interpretation he is a replicant, all four of the replicants, the main characters, they're going after him. So there's a possibility that Deckard is a bad guy, or the replicants are killing him, especially if he's the villain, or a human, or a replicant killing replicants. Very interesting interpretation, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. 
So I'll be doing a formal review of Life is Strange Before the Storm Later. Right now I'd like to share a little thought about the game. So I completed it and it was pretty recent. Pretty short game to go through, but still a lot of fun. Very enjoyable. If you get to at least the sec second episode onwards is great. So yeah. Sarah, what's her name? Very, probably female character of 2017. So many words. Um, the ending, open end ending where you decide what happens to Rachel Amber. Just amazing. Like, I don't want to really spoil it, but it's, it's just amazing. I'm trying to figure out if I can get through the explanation without spoiling it. Sarah. Sarah is basically Sarah Connor, an homage to Sarah Connor. Spelled differently, but still the same character. There's a bit of a time paradox thing as a prequel. Um... They basically go back in time because the first episode, the first season's after the second season. You can decide what happens to Rachel Amber. Even though you know her fate in the later season. And there's the whole Blade Runner thing that's mentioned with pirating Blade Runner. Is it a real Blade Runner? Is it a pirated Blade Runner? Is it a real memory of Rachel Amber's or is it a fake memory in the end where you decide? There's so much sci-fi reference in it and you have the whole Terminator thing with Sarah Connor and I'm trying to replay the game just for collector mode stuff but like some stuff I'm observing when I started those two before with like the hand and like the flaming hand a flashback with Chloe Price's father. Or hallucination or whatever. Could be drug induced, I don't know. It's very father based, like John Connor and his son Kyle Reese, or his father of Kyle Reese and the Terminator, and all those father aspects of the video game. And I find that very interesting. Hopefully, I'll use some video footage and then it'll be more clear. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please subscribe and comment below. The director of Cowboy Bebop, Shinichiro Watanabe, is doing an anime called Blade Runner 2022. Or pre... Pre... It's before 2049. I think there's also a live action 2029. I find it interesting. Before, I loved Cowboy Bebop. It had a very good, it had very good character animation. I don't... Second like watching, I didn't think the story was that great, but rewatch. But with its tie into Blade Runner, I think it'd be very interesting. The whole atmosphere thing, both things, both media do, is very good. Got yeah, like the space truckers of like Cowboy Bebop. I like Space Dandy. I like Terror Resonance. Currently, Terror. Uh, Cowboy Bebop. Definitely worth watching. I think it'd be a perfect time to watch Cowboy Bebop and Blade Runner at the same time.
And here comes all the Cowboy X Blade Runner fan fiction. Pretty exciting. Thoughts on Blade Runner 2022. Very good. Well, Add homages to Star Wars and The Matrix. Some characters show up from the previous film. The voice acting in the beginning was weird with like protesters and stuff. They do a lot of homages, visual homages to the original film. So it was like rip off a little bit, but pretty cool that it was re replicated. No pun intended. Sort of a fight club plot in the end. It's like 22 minutes, very short, but a lot is done. This whole real versus fake thing, which is really cool. It's done very differently than Ghost in the Shell, which the director didn't do, but obviously you saw in Japan. I would, at least. Everyone's going to complain. Why is this an anime series? Why is this a full series? Why isn't this the TV show? This is a better trailer than the actual trailers for Blade Runner, which is a shame. A mistake Looper made regarding Blade Runner and Atari. Before they saw, said there was a lot of product placement of certain companies that didn't exist anymore. They mentioned Pan Am, which doesn't exist. They mentioned Atari, because they thought it didn't exist, because Hasbro bought Atari, hence it can't exist, which isn't technically true and isn't true. They're trying to work on the Atari box. They're trying to work on the tar They worked on the Atari flashback. Atari still exists. Where it still exists in 2049 is a totally different story. Whereas the right now, Blade Runner, uh, the, tr the Atari company, where the Atari license still exists. I mean, it was bought, it wasn't destroyed, it wasn't out of copyright or whatever, like it still exists. And it exists in Blade Runner 2049.